Ladies and gentlemen, I am of course Fergal Sharkey. This is the River Avon on the edge of Bristol. What am I doing here, you ask? Nick Ferrari gave me a challenge. Get out on the ground, test the rivers, find out Fergal if indeed we are slowly poisoning, slowly destroying every single river in the country. So I'm out here, we're going to test the water, we're going to test the quality, we're going to test for E. coli, we're going to test for all of the bugs, the nasties and the stuff that should not be in these rivers. We're going to do the environment agency's job for it. <laughs> I've got anything over 20 being really bad. Now why does any of this matter I hear you ask? Nitrate is a food source, particularly for algae, that has a massively detrimental impact on the river. In fact, it slowly poisons the river. But not only that, take a mouthful of this stuff, nitrate reduces the ability of red blood cells to carry oxygen around the body. You go swimming in this river right now, keep your mouth closed. You're still two or three minutes away from actually taking a reading of it. And now we wait. Now who cares about phosphate? Why should we be bothered? Curiously enough, there's a number of sources. It provides a food source for bacteria in the river mostly algae and again any river has natural levels of algae but if there's an overabundance of food for them the algae will explode that coats the bed of the river that cuts out the sunlight that kills the whole base and foundation of an ecosystem and on a really bad day it will like Lake Windermere like Loch Ney in Northern Ireland turn into blue green algae that is highly toxic to humans and lethal to animals it is, again, simply poisoning the river system. Sources, fertilizer, farming, huge source of it. By the way, every time you flush the loo, you're adding to that because phosphate also comes from human waste. And oh, by the way, it's in any number of products like washing powder, like the tablets you put in your dishwasher, like your hair shampoo, simply because it's used for a water softener and it makes things nice and foamy and we like to have it. Little did you know, it's going into the sewage system. It's not been stripped out by water companies, which they should be doing, but they don't mostly. And it ends up in rivers. And again, it's poisoning every single river in the country. And let me remind you all, in the modern world, there is not one single river anywhere in England that is now not polluted. The largest source of that pollution, agriculture and the water industry. And invariably, we're talking about the things we're testing here, nitrate, phosphate and ammonia. On a good day we would like it to be way less than 0 0.03, 0 0.69. This river is completely now toxic with phosphate. It is poisoning the river but I'm not surprised in the least because I can run this test in rivers up and down this country and the truth is those in the authority, the environment agency, the water companies and off what I would suggest have known about this for decades and done little of anything and certainly nothing of any consequence to control it and they've allowed both farming and the water industry to basically slowly poison every river in the country. Right behind me right now, chemical drum, clearly some industrial waste has just been dumped into the rivers somewhere upstream. Welcome to England's rivers, welcome to the way we look after police and safeguard them. And it's not looking good. Now the EA has a view that as a worst case scenario there should be absolutely nothing more than 0.3 parts per million of phosphate in any river. This one as I've just told you is well over double of what actually is the upper level the EA say is reasonable. I would suggest that the EA has got it wrong and that number actually should be way less. The company involved in this, Wessex Water, 19% of your bill goes to pay nothing but interest on debt and this company has paid out so much in dividends to shareholders every household within their service area about £2,207 worth per household of your money has gone in dividends to shareholders truth is this river like every other I wouldn't go swimming in it it's been slowly poisoned it's been slowly strangled to death by incompetence greed and financial engineering. There's one final test we're going to do. This is the test for E. coli. We need to send this off to a lab. It will get cultured overnight. E. coli, very nasty stuff. To give you an example, a matter of weeks ago, 35 athletes at a triathlon in the River Thames all ended up with diarrhea 
and vomiting after doing nothing more than swimming in the River Thames and some of them ended up in hospital vomiting blood. The reasons? E. coli. Nasty, dangerous stuff. So let me just run through. So this is what you're listening for. This PPM is parts per million and as Fergal told us, phosphates, to remind you, that's what causes algae that will kill animals and is toxic for humans. Phosphates, you need it to be 0.3 PPM, parts per million. The River Avon, 0.69 that's a fail. Nitrates, to remind you, that's what causes pollution in the river, affects oxygen in the body. Anything above 5 ppm parts per million is deemed excessive. It came in at 20 parts per million. That's a fail. Ammonia, I remind you, that's what you're looking for for faeces and urine. We're not going to say the word again, children. That was, it needed at 0.3 parts per million. It was 0.21 so the Evan does pass there. But E. coli that Fergal referenced. E. coli, I remind you, this can cause, again, sorry if you're having your breakfast, diarrhoea, stomach cramps, vomit, vomiting. We need that at 1,047 by the measurement there. We have a it, and that is a fail as well. So the Fergal fact sheet is for the River Avon, three out of four fails. Next week, we go to the nation's longest river, the River Severn, to see just how effectively Severn Trent Water is treating the sewage it's discharged into its water. And we've got the results already, and they will astound you.